What's going on guys? My name is Mark Wagner and today I'm going to be talking about the types of ad creatives that have generated the best results for me. Now if you saw my last video you heard me say that your ad creatives are basically the most important thing when it comes to advertising. So I'm basically just going to talk about every single type of you know multi six figure ad creative that I've had and um, you know why that formula I guess is so um, effective and I'm also going to dive into some types of ad creatives that I have tested with just very very little results so hopefully I can save you some time and some money and you can find a better ad sooner so let's go ahead and hop right into it <laughs> All right guys, so we're just gonna go ahead and jump right into it because that's what I do, because I don't like wasting your time. All right, so first let's talk about some things that you need to test. Um, A, like when you're first launching your initial creative test, which is like what I recommend doing before any interest or anything like that, at least uh, if you're doing Facebook ads, and then also just things that you need to test down the road. Um, once you have like, you know, kind of a winning ad, but you really wanna fine tune that and make it as good as possible. So. Uh, the number one thing is probably captions or no captions because it's kind of dependent on every product. Um, as you'll see me say later, I generally tend to stick to very little to no captions. Uh, that's just what seems to do best for me. But again, it's definitely dependent on the product. So um, I always test this like during my initial creative test, as you'll see here. Um, Actually, I, I didn't even put it there. But anyway, um, yeah, so definitely test at least one ad with captions and one ad without captions. Um, the next thing is your music. And this is actually like a pretty big deal. Like you wouldn't think that music really affects your ad, um, but it does. Like I've seen some very, um, very significant results when I'm comparing like a really like um, good beat that like is in tune with the like clips, you know, it's transitioning at the right time of the beat drops, just stuff like that. It actually, it really, really helps. So another thing that you can test is scroll stoppers. This is essentially like the first five seconds of your video, um, which is the most important five seconds of your video because that's where you like capture someone's attention when they're scrolling on their newsfeed. So definitely worth testing as well. Another thing is the placement of particular clips, which basically means like instead of having, um, I don't know, clip, W at the um, at the back of your video, you may want to put it at the front of your video um, just because it's a good clip and you know if that's going to draw someone's attention, uh, then you want to kind of rearrange it a little bit and just play with that. Another thing is Twitter style versus like just a regular video ad. Um, so Twitter style essentially just means you're going to have like a white border around your video um, and you're also going to have some text at the top. So essentially, like the name implies, this is just making it um, like a Twitter style video. So if you ever go on Twitter, I don't even have a Twitter. I, I just, I don't have time for that. But anyway, I, I'm pretty sure that there's like text on the top and like a white border around the content. Um, so yeah, that's, it's just essentially more of a native ad. Um, so that people don't immediately think that it's an advertisement trying to sell them something so they won't like you know just click out of your video so another thing that you can test is the length of the video as you'll see me say later um i generally tend to stick to about like 35 to 45 seconds um but it's definitely worth testing like you know a 60 second video or a 30 second video or whatever facebook even recommends like i don't know i think they say like 20 second videos or something like that it's just like ridiculous like I don't know, but Facebook doesn't really know what they're talking about. Anyway, another thing that you can test is your ad copy. I don't really know why this is last because this is like, this is really important. Um, but yeah, so your ad copy is essentially just the description uh, that you're going to put like under your ad or I guess above your ad, depending on the placement. Um, but yeah, you know what I mean. All right. So uh, like I said earlier, I definitely try to test some different things during my initial creative test which is done before I launch any interest or before I even try to like sell the product. I just want to figure out what creative works best. So I generally test three different video ads, uh, two to three different ad copies. Well, normally I do three, but you can get away with two, um, especially if you're on a lower budget. I, I also try to test Twitter style. Like I'll do the same video, 
Like for example, I have ad one, ad two, ad three. I'm gonna do ad one and Twitter style. And then I'm also going to do ad one for like the alternate ad copy and the alternate thumbnails. And essentially that just gives me a completely even test of all the variables. But anyway, um, so like I said, I do Twitter style for like the same ad and then I do that ad also in non-Twitter style, if that makes sense. And then uh, two to three thumbnails, um, like I said, I normally try to test three. Um, but that's just because I'm an overachiever. All right, so a uh, couple of things to keep in mind with your advertisements is that, like I said earlier, it's just, it's gonna be different on every single product and it's gonna be different for everyone. So um, it's definitely important to not just like listen to everything I say. Um, I know that's kind of counterproductive, but anyway, like do your own research, test your own stuff, I'm just sharing what works for me. So, um, your audience is really, it's who you need to think about when you're creating these advertisements because I wouldn't pitch to someone who's 70 years old the way I would pitch to someone who's 18 years old. There's just two completely different people. Same thing kind of with like men and women. Um, and just everything about your product, like it's, it's different uh, depending on your audience. So you really gotta keep that in mind and you need to like, you know, obviously gear your ads towards your target audience. So here's what I tend to see in all of my ads that have gone on to do multi six figures in sales. And I'm not exaggerating. Like I have several advertisements. I have an advertisement that has been running for over a year, over a year. And it's done like, I don't know, definitely over 300 can sale. Anyway, not trying to brag, but um, all of my winning ads have um, a really, really good thumbnail. That's like, it's just always, they have a really good thumbnail. Um, another part is like the really high quality videos. Like the vast majority of my winning ads are taken by myself. It's custom content. You can't find this crap on YouTube and um, you're not gonna be like cropping it. Cause when you go on YouTube and you like take a video and you crop it, um, the dimensions are all messed up, so it's generally going to end up being a lower quality clip, which is why it's super important to record your own videos, especially when you do end up finding a winner. All right, so another thing is it's very path, it's very fast paced, kind of like how I'm talking right now. It's also like easy on the eyes. Like uh, essentially, you just want to make a video that people want to watch, okay? And no one's going to watch your thing if it's just like, by the way, when I say fast paced, I don't mean like having two second clips, just like changing really fast. I'm talking about like, <clears throat> it's action, you know, it's kind of like watching a movie. Like you want to get that dopamine rush because you want something cool to happen and then something also cool to happen, you know, that kind of thing. And it's easy on the eyes because it's not like a ton of reading. Like I say here, there's little to no captions in all of my winning ads. And it's just something that people will want to watch essentially. Um, another thing is like Twitter style, the vast majority of my winning ads are Twitter stuff, but that's because a lot of them have a younger demographic. And I really haven't found Twitter style to be effective uh, with products that have an older demographic. Another thing is my ads, at least my video creatives, they're not overly salesy. Like if you were to be scrolling down your newsfeed and you saw one of my ads, you wouldn't even think it's an ad. You would just think it's like showcasing my product because that's what it is. And you wouldn't even like necessarily think that, you know, it's a company showcasing their product um, because it's just, it's that cool. Um, another thing is most of my winning ads are four by five. Um, some of them are one by one, but with four by five, I've found that Twitter style works so much better. Um, However, it is gonna limit your placement, so it's really up to you as far, well, to test and just see what works better. And then, like I said earlier, 35 to 45 seconds seems to be the sweet spot as far as my videos go. So I know I haven't said this before, um, I probably should have, but uh, when I say winning ad formulas, I'm only talking about video ads because that's really all that I do. Um, pictures just really just aren't effective for cold traffic and, um, yeah, so I really, really only recommend that you do video ads. Anyway, uh, getting into the first type of, I guess, winning video ad for me, um, obviously I can't reveal too much because I don't want you to know my product and I 
can't just tell you like what's in my ads because then you would know my product. But um, anyway, this is one of the most effective uh, types of video ads. So you start off with like an unboxing or a scroll stopper. I guess an unboxing is a type of scroll stopper, but um, you know, no one really utilizes it. So I figured that I would include that in there uh, just because it tends to work very well for me. So um, a scroll stopper, like I said, should be about five seconds. And then you should follow up with like uh, two plus um, product demonstrations. So as you can see, there's like two ways that you can do this. Um, and this isn't like super specific. Like I'm not saying you can't have three product demonstrations, but um, in my, you know, winning ads, it generally has like two or it has like four. Um, and obviously if it has four, it's going to be like shorter clips. All right. So. If you want, you can like screenshot these, but like I said, they're not like super um, specific. Another type of video ad that tends to do really well, uh, this is the one that's been running for like over a year, but um, it's just like a straight product description. Like, sorry, demonstration, but it has like a really good scroll stopper and um, it's really just, it's like a movie, you know, you want to watch it. And so people do watch it and they buy my product. And um, this isn't gonna work unless I, you have like a really eye-catching product, or at least you can make it seem very eye-catching, even if your product is pretty boring. Um, but yeah, this tends to work very, very well, uh, especially if you can get custom content. And like I said, you have a good product that you can record in a way um, that just makes people wanna watch it. All right, so another thing that I've had some success with, but really I don't sell that many problem solving products, so it's a bit hard for me. Um, but yeah, the ones that I have sold, um, this works really well. So it's called the cut and band-aid method, which essentially means in the first like uh, four to eight seconds of the video, you just introduce a problem. Like for example, can't get girls to talk to you. Well, here is this course that teaches you how to get girls to talk to you. I don't know, something like that. Um, and then essentially you just like demonstrate it after you, um, you know, put the bandaid on that product problem. Sorry. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So essentially it's just, um, cutting down your audience. So if people don't have problems talking to girls then they're just going to go ahead and scroll by and you don't really care because those people aren't going to buy your product anyway. But if you do, then people are just automatically going to be hooked into your video. And then, um, you know, when they get that problem solved or when they see that problem solved then they're going to want that problem solved for them as well. Um, and that's what makes the advertisement so effective. All right. So now I'm going to be talking about what doesn't work for me as far as, um, feed video ads go. All right. So, um, like I said earlier, I generally do very little captions, which means I'm not explaining every single little feature of a product. This is something I see a lot of people do both in the ad copy and in the actual creative. And it's a big mistake. Okay. People, the point of the ad isn't to explain about your product. The point of the ad is to, um, hook people. And then once people go to your product page, then you can explain the product. But it's definitely not what you should be doing in your advertisement. Another thing that doesn't really work for me is any video smaller than one by one. Now this is really hard. Um, if you don't like have your own videos, if you don't get custom content, if you're just taking it from YouTube, like I said, it can be really low quality, which sucks, but I don't know. I mean, it's still worth testing, I guess. Um, however, even if you are taking videos from YouTube, uh, if you can just try to find higher quality ones so that you can crop it and it doesn't look awful. All right. So another thing is boring ads. Like you may have noticed, I've said multiple times, your ad kind of needs to look like a movie. Like it needs to hook people and it just needs to be something that they want to watch. So, um, yeah, like I said earlier, if your product is really eye catching, then it's going to be kind of easy. Um, to make a good video that people want to watch. But if it's not, then your video still has to be like, even if the first couple clips are just slightly related to the product, but they're very like, um, eye catching, then do that, you know? Um, but really this is, this is a very, very big point. And if you take nothing else out of this video, then just remember your ad needs to be something that you would want to watch, or at least if you were your target market, 
you would stop scrolling and watch your video because it's not boring. It's not overly salesy. It's just, you know, good to watch, I guess. <laughs> and then um, another thing that doesn't work for me is old clips that all of my competitors are using. Now, this doesn't necessarily apply to like a very new product, I guess. Um, like if it's a trending product, you know, you can kind of get away with it, especially if you like rearrange clips and stuff like that. But you literally can't just go rip someone's ad and expect any success. It's just, it doesn't work out like that anymore. Um, and you also like, especially with saturated products or products that are getting saturated, I guess, uh, you definitely want to introduce new ad creatives into the mix because if you just take people's other like ads, um, then they're gonna have absolutely no reason to buy from you. They've probably already seen the advertisement and um, it's, just, it's just not gonna work out. All right, so another thing is videos of people talking about the product. Um, I see a lot of people doing this, especially with like video or sorry, like beauty products and stuff like that, like health products. Um, and this just doesn't work. Um, maybe, maybe it works for other people, but I've tested this like at least four or five, six products and it just, it just doesn't do well. So yeah. Uh, that's what works for me and what doesn't work for me uh, when it comes to feed ads. And now we're going to be talking about story ads. So story ads, I definitely have a different structure than feed ads, but what works is kind of similar. So um, what works for me as far as story ads go is a caption on top saying the sale. I have like specific uh, durations for all of my captions, but I essentially only have two captions on story ads. I have a call to action and I have something saying like, I don't know, 50% off, whatever sale I'm doing. And uh, that caption is going to be on the top where it says 50% off. And it's generally going to come in about like uh, six seconds after the video has started. And it's gonna leave at 13 seconds after the video has started. And then, like I said, I'm gonna have a call to action and that is going to be at the bottom. And I'm going to put some like arrows on either side of this. I may like animate it so it jumps. Um, and essentially that's just going to come in after like uh, nine seconds. It's going to stay there the rest of the video. Um, <clears throat> now that like duration, like the nine seconds, 15 seconds, whatever, it doesn't apply to um, carousel ads. Now, if you don't know, you can do carousel story ads, which essentially means that you do like multiple videos or pictures or combination of both. Now, <clears throat> these tend to work pretty well for me. But I really haven't seen a huge difference um, when comparing it to like a, uh, a normal like 15 second story ad. Um, but what I have found to work best with carousel ads is um, like a 30 second video, like make it continuous, okay? You literally just make like a 30 second um, story ad and then uh, just cut it in half basically. And you'll have to like upload one clip at a time. I don't know, kind of confusing, but you'll figure it out. And then um, I just do a picture as the third clip. Um, and then I have like a very, very obvious call to action on that picture. And it's obviously just like a picture of the product. Um, tends to work pretty well. So another thing is like I was saying earlier, um, it's kind of similar as far as what works for me um, with story ads and feed ads because scroll stoppers and like unboxings and stuff like that, they just do very, very well. All right, so now I'm gonna be talking about what doesn't work for me as far as story ads go. So I have seen some success in the past with picture ads on the story, but just not near as much as I have with video. But like I said, it's not really worth testing pictures for feed, um, but I would say it's definitely worth testing for stories. Now, another thing that doesn't work for me is non-obvious call to actions. Um, because people like, you don't get a chance to give someone an ad copy when they see a story ad. So you essentially just have to like tell them to swipe up like really, 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 really big. It's pretty obnoxious, I guess, but you gotta do what you gotta do. So another thing is just cropping my winning feed ads. Now I've tried this before and unfortunately it just doesn't work. Um, you can't just take like a one by one video or a four by five video and just like put it in 16 by nine and um, run on story. It just, it just doesn't give you good results. You kind of have to rearrange the clips so that it's giving people um, the right, you know, the right clips at the right time. And it's just like serving them important, like, I don't know. 
you'll kind of get what I mean if um, you know you have a story app because you wouldn't want like let's say the first 10 seconds of your clip are just like one kind of kind of like boring product demonstration um, which it shouldn't be but you wouldn't want that to be like two-thirds of your story ad it's just it would not work out well um, so yeah I definitely try to have like um, two to three clips usually two in a 15 second story ad and I would say like three to four clips max in a 30 second story ad and then you definitely want to have like your your most important your most eye-catching uh, clips in like the first 10 seconds I would say of the story ad because like I said you know scroll stoppers are super important I'm just drawing people's attention because like I feel like it's even harder to get people's attention on the story because they're literally just like swiping like so quickly you know because we don't care about 90% of the stories out there let's be real um but when people are on their feed at least they get like a full like uh, I, mean, I just feel like it's easier to capture people's attention with feed ads but anyway another thing that does not work for me with story ads is youtube videos now like i said these can definitely get messed up when you crop them for feed which would be like one by one or four by five but it's even worse when you do 16 by nine like it's really 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 bad so actually what i do is i'll just like well i, I have all my winning products so i was like pull up my phone go on snapchat and I'll record the ad and that way it comes out on 16 by nine. And um, then obviously I can just like add text and music and stuff like that. And those are my story <laughs> ads normally. Uh, those are actually my feed ads as well. Uh, just because if it starts out as 16 by nine and you crop it to four by five, it's going to have a higher resolution than if it starts out as like, I don't know. I think iPhones actually record them four by five but if I record it in 16 by 9, then I can like um, I can do both my story and my feed ads from that one clip. Anyway, um, another thing that doesn't really work for me, it has kind of in the past been okay, but is Twitter style videos with story ads, which like I said, just means there's like a white background and like a little bit of text above the video. Um, yeah, these just they didn't really perform well, but I did have like one that kind of did well. So I would say that it is worth testing. All right, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I'm hoping that you're able to get a ton of value out of this and you kind of understand what works, at least for me, as far as video ads go. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.